All right, let me see if I can get our lights adjusted a little bit. Um, that's a little better. Okay. Welcome to not just week 13 of our freshman seminar, but welcome to the last week of our freshman engineering seminar. This, well, you don't have to be that happy to not have class with me again. I mean, I mean, come on, you know. I'm not that mean, right? I'm just kidding. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about some housekeeping items because um, we have a couple things coming up. We're going to have, obviously, our, our last quiz in here. But I want to talk about a couple housekeeping items regarding finishing out the class as well as our final exam. Um, so to start, after today, uh, I mean, I've got the attendance grade that I need to uh, upload from today. Uh, but other than that, um, the attendance grade will be update or updated well before you take your final. And the weekly uh, quiz average will be updated uh, when you take your final as well. So the only component, uh, by the time you start your final, the only component that will be outstanding is just that, the, the final exam. Okay? The quiz will be made available probably either later today or early tomorrow, and it will close December 6th when you get back. Yes, sir? Oh, don't worry, I'm going to cover that, I, I promise. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll know here in a second. Um, before I get to that, though, I do want to mention a couple things. Uh, first off, um, if this is your first, uh, truly your first class here at Marshall, your first semester here at Marshall, something's going to come up uh, when you get back from break that I want to mention, and that's course evaluations. Um, this is your one chance to uh, sort of give us as instructors feedback on, on the course. I mean, uh, uh, with this course, I mean, you know how it is, you know, we have weekly presenters and whatnot, uh, but, but not for just for this course, uh, but for your other courses. Um, I mean, I think we as instructors take this pretty seriously, so if you have any uh, feedback or anything that you'd like to provide, I mean, we'd really like uh, uh, that you fill these out. They're really easy to find. Uh, you just go to MyMU, uh, you click uh, right here, there's a link for course schedule and grades, and then there'll be something called course evaluations. And the way it'll work is you'll have a survey that pops up for all of the courses that you're currently taking. Um, so, and you just fill that survey out. And it's, it's a pretty straightforward survey. It only takes about a minute. There's just a few basic uh, ranking questions where there'll be some areas and you rank us on a scale of 1 to 5 and any questions and whatnot uh, or any feedback you can provide. We really appreciate it. It, it, it helps us out. It helps us improve what we do in the classroom because, again, we're, we're here for you. I mean... Uh, I mean, I could go, you know, just lecture in the broom closet and whatnot, but we're here to make sure that you all are getting a, a quality education, so this is one of the ways that, that we can improve that. Okay, so don't forget, that closes December 6th at midnight. Okay, let's talk about the final, because that was a re really good question discussing. Okay, first off, let's talk about the timing. So the final will open on December 6th at noon. It will close December 9th at noon, okay? So that's the window. Opens December 6th, which is Friday, closes Monday. Okay, opens and closes at noon. Okay, it is a timed exam. Okay, so unlike our quizzes, where the quizzes are, um, uh, 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 the, the quizzes, you know, you can sort of stop and start, your heart's content. This is a forced completion, one sitting, 60 minutes uh, uh, exam. Now, uh, before uh, I saw that, uh, let me say one other thing. This exam, I can guarantee you, does not take 60 minutes to complete. You could probably complete the exam in about 10 or 15 minutes, but uh, you're given, you know, just ample time to make sure that, that you're able to complete it. Uh, I had a question. Oh, does, it, does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Now, uh, 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 another thing uh, worth mentioning, the uh, quizzes up until now have been multiple choice. The final is going to be about 8 to 10 short answer questions. So, uh, you know, I have a question, you just sort of uh, type out a one to two sentence response. You don't need to write out any essays or anything, something uh, uh, pretty basic. There are uh, three survey questions at the end of the exam, but those aren't for a grade. That's just for us to uh, update our, our, our data for accreditation purposes and whatnot. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, the, the, there'll be three sort of ranked questions at the end. Those aren't the graded. The short answer ones are. Again, opens Friday, December 6th. Closes Monday, December 9th. Opens at noon, closes at noon. You have 60 minutes and it's forced completion. Once you start, you, you've got 60 minutes. You're not going to be able to pause it and come back to it. Any questions about the final? Everybody good? Okay. All right. Um, and I, I'll say one other thing before I turn it over to our speakers. 
I promise you what I am not going to ask you on the final is, what was the fourth bullet point on slide three in week six? It's not that, okay? It's just about general overview of topics that we've discussed during the semester. If you've been paying attention and you have a pulse and a respiratory pattern, you can do just fine uh, on this exam, okay? It's not, it's not an exam where you have to cram and study and, and all that. That's not really what this is. If you've been paying attention, you're going to do just fine. I mean, it might not be the worst idea in the world just to go through the notes just to make sure you remember some stuff, but again, I, I, it's not, that's not really what this exam is about. Uh, everybody good? Okay, so we're going to keep on trucking with our, our same pattern. So we're going to have one of our faculty members come uh, and present, and then we'll have our main speaker. So I'm going to turn it over to our, our faculty member. He's one of our electrical faculty, Dr. Tarek Massad. He's going to tell you a little bit about what he does. Let's give him a warm welcome. Buddha. And uh, here's a, a, a brief bio of mine. So I got my master and PhD degree from uh, Colorado School of Mining back in 2012 and 13. Uh, prior to joining Marshall in fall 2017, I was visiting assistant professor at Texas A&M uh, Gainesville in the electrical engineering and computer science program. And as I mentioned, since uh, fall 2017, I have been um, here at Marshall as an assistant professor at the electrical engineering and electrical engineering program. Um, my area of uh, expertise is, uh, if you don't know, electrical engineering it has a different um, area of focus or concentration area. There is a control system, communication system, energy and power system, and also we have a computer engineering. So my area is energy and power system. If you like, if you are asking what's energy and power system, basically how we generate electricity, how we transmit electricity, and how we distribute electricity. Because we have these lights on, that means somebody somewhere has generated some power and they are transmitting that power to us and we, then they distribute this power to within the city. So that's basically my area uh, of expertise, energy and power system. Um, then um, do we have a, an electrical engineering program? We have uh, courses related to energy and power system. The first course, which is IT, which is electric machinery, which is uh, offer every other semesters. And usually students there learn about how basic principles, genera electric generators and electric motors, which is energy conversion process, as well as uh, something called power plant processes. We also have another course, which is an uh, electrical power system, which is uh, that covers the transmission and distribution. So because power system components are generation, transmission, distribution. So by taking these two courses, you will learn all the aspects of power system uh, components. Besides those uh, courses, we have also energy conversion and uh, lab, and that lab uh, basically for electric machine class where students, they have hands-on experience on electric generators, different types of AC and DC generators and motors, uh, as well as we also have some equipment for uh, DC solar uh, components. Okay, as a, quickly as I mentioned, what's the main component of solar systems, which is my area. We have generation where we have a power plant that generates, pow generates power, and then before they transmit that power to us, they have to go step up the voltage from generation to transmission using a power transformer, and then we have a transmission line, so you have to transmit that power through a long distance uh, to get it to the load area, and then once it's there, we have to just bring the voltage down from transmission level to the distribution level and deliver that power to us. So those basically the three components of power system, generation, transmission, and distribution, and when you become an electrical engineering student and you take uh, those courses, you will learn about all those components. Research area. Uh, my research area basically on um, research focus on pursuing fundamental research aims that increase the penetration of sustainable clean renewable energy, which is basically solar and wind energy. Hydropower is also um, uh, renewable energy, but my research focus how can we integrate uh, and developing methods and algorithms and how we can increase the penetration of renewable energy. And you, you will be asking why that would be important. Um, if you look here quickly, if you look to the right-hand side, if you see between 2010 up to now, the green line, the renewable energy generation decreased only by 5% uh, 
uh, in the US, and that is really small. And you can compare it with uh, other type of generation, whether I mean natural gas or coal or nuclear. So clearly that uh, we have around, what, 10% from renewable plus another 5% or 7% from hydropower. So both of them are around 16 or 13%. And we need more, um, and I can talk to you about the advance of renewable energy. It doesn't deplete, it's available naturally, and it doesn't have any pollution or emission to increase CO2 emissions. So we need um, and, um, low operation costs as well. So um, we need, what's the problem? Why we have that low percentage? Because we need to update what they call it our power grid. Our power grid, it looks something like this. It's called centralized power grid where we have generation, transmission, distribution, and if you're gonna put more renewable energy, renewable energy sources are variable resources or intermittent, which means sometimes, for example, the BG solar during the night, you don't have any, 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 any solar radiance, so it doesn't produce any power. So if you're gonna depend on that source, you need to make sure that your grid is equivalent with enough uh, resources to handle that variable. So for example, you need a lot of battery storage system, or you need to talk to your customer so they can adjust their energy consumption so you can cope up with that variability. Same thing for wind. Wind sometimes is high, sometimes is down. Usually you have more wind during the night, less wind during the day, so you are producing variable power. So you need to make sure that your power uh, grid has enough equipment and it's smart enough, if you can call it, to withstand uh, that variability. So all my research focused how can we move from centralized power grid to more decentralized power grid by adding more what they call them demand resources, uh, demand response um, methods and energy storage and how we can put renewable and non-renewable energy sources together to become more dispatchable power source. So that's basically uh, the focus of my research. And I try to make it quick and I think I, I was successful to do that. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Does I have any questions for Dr. Masala? Okay, I like white audience. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you guys. All right, so um, I, before we turn it over to our, our main speakers, we'll tell you a little bit of, uh, about them. First off, I've got to thank both of them publicly. I asked them a little bit later than I normally would to. I asked them sort of at the last minute and they, they agreed to present, so I really do appreciate uh, them coming. But um, in terms of, uh, of who they are, these two uh, uh, folks right here are currently enrolled engineering students. They're seniors in our engineering program at Marshall, and they've both been successful uh, in accruing internships uh, during their time here. Um, you've been uh, here f uh, in this class every week, and you've been listening to, you know, uh, uh, folks like uh, Sean Carter from the Corps and Doug Kirk from the DOH, and all these different uh, 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 practicing engineers telling you what they think you need to know uh, in order to get an internship. But I think that probably the best advice that you would get is from students who were literally in those seats like three years ago. Okay, so These are students that were in this class not too long ago and now these are the students that quite frankly I think you all want to be. These are ones getting ready to graduate, have internships under their belt uh, and so on and so forth. So I really think you ought to take their advice uh, uh, pretty seriously. I'm going to let Josh go first because he's got to get back to work. He's got to get to work at 1245. So I'm going to turn it over to Josh Blatt, one of our Emmy majors. He's going to tell you a little bit about what he's been doing. So let's give him a warm welcome. All right, so as he said, my name is Josh Blatt, and I'm a senior in mechanical engineering here at Marshall. And I currently have an internship at Prime Engineering. I'm a mechanical engineering intern there, which I think my boss actually spoke to you all a couple weeks ago. So you may remember that, of course. But So he wanted me to talk a little bit about what I'm currently doing at my internship and then kind of give you advice on how to get an internship yourself. So currently at my internship, uh, it's a, quite a steep learning curve when you get your first internship because everything you learn in school isn't technically everything you need when you get a job. So there's a pretty steep learning curve when you will get your first internship. There's a lot you still need to learn. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. But some of the things that I've been introduced to are quite about like quite amount of different software. So these two images are actually from a software called Autodesk Plant 3D, which is the software we use at our office 
along with the whole Autodesk suite. But Mechanicals, we use Plant 3D. It's a 3D modeling software specifically designed for piping, so creating orthos and isos of piping and uh, setting up equipment, which you can kind of see in this bottom picture down here with a couple like back vessels, pumping structures that can do all that. Um, we also use a software called uh, Review Bluebeam, which is a PDF editing software. So that's typically for like your boss. When you submit a drawing, you'll get what's called red lines, which is like things that you need to correct before we send it to the client. So that's the software we use for that. It's really user friendly and like marking up PDFs, putting like, okay, you need to change the font size here, or this needs to be moved over here, or update this ortho and erase that. So it's really good for things like that. Um, then we use a software called CADWORK Structure, which it's more of a civil thing, but I've had a little bit of exposure to it as well. We use it to design all of our structures, and they can be exported into a software that runs analysis on the structure, make sure it's capable of the load, and all of that. So those are the three softwares that I've primarily used thus far at my internship. And then this image in the top, I guess that'd be your left, the top left here is what's called 3D Point Cloud As Building. So this, you can kind of see a little bit of a whitish gray outline of something there. That's actually a 3D scan. So what we do is we go out and scan like a whole facility and you get what's called point clouds. So these are like geolocated and it has a bunch of images from this place. So basically like 360 images and you can pull them into Plant 3D and like I said, geolocate them. And what you can do is it'll generate a 3D model from all of these pictures because there's pictures of several different points and it makes a 3D model for you. And you can go in and you justify two points so it has a reference so you could say between this point and this point is four inches. So it takes that and it basically you can do what's called um, walking the run. So you'll start at one end of your piping, you'll give a dimension like this pipe is four inches. And what it'll do is it walks the run of your pipe, so it'll go up through and say, okay, is this a four inch pipe? And it'll say, you'll say yes, and it'll move to the next piece and say, okay, this is a 90 degree elbow. And you'll say yes, and it just walks all the way across, and it can generate your whole facility for you, and it saves a lot of time in trying to model, make sure everything's in the correct place. So it's pretty handy and a really neat software. This is a pretty basic example, but we've done some pretty large projects with that. Um, and then another thing is just like general client standards and specs. So it's not like when you do a drawing, you can kind of just do it so that you think it looks good and it's good enough. There's a lot of like regulations that clients supply. So like you have to have a certain font size, a certain font type. The font can't be smaller than this. You're only allowed like certain things on certain pages. So it's very specific. Drawing numbers have to be very specific, like what part of the plan it's in and everything. So you learn a lot about that kind of thing. Um, specifically, I've had a lot of uh, work with PFDs and PNIDs, which is process flow diagrams and piping and instrumentation diagrams. That's with a lot of this piping, so it's basically just a 2D drawing that represents the 3D real world plan. Um, and then we also do some report writing, which I've had some experience with as well. And uh, it's a little bit different than like a, a school report that you'll write for like a lab or something because Typically, you're writing a report to make sure that a company is in compliance with whatever they're applying for. So, for instance, like a Dasani water company, they have to apply through the city of New York to be a certified water distributor. So, you have to go in and make sure the plant meets all these different needs. And then in your report, you have to specify, like, number of air changes they have in their uh, filtration room and all kinds of super specific things. So. It's a little bit different than school, but you get the basics at school of you know how to do technical writing, make sure it's all professional and not just plopping something together. And then the last thing is, and you'll, I'm sure you'll learn as you go along, there are a ton of acronyms in engineering, so it's a, a hard thing to get used to because they pretty much speak in acronyms a lot. So like PNIDs, PFDs, they abbreviate different companies, so it's just a learning curve with that as well too, to make sure you actually know what they're talking about. And then this is a little bit of advice on how to get an internship yourself. So before the internship, which I'm sure you've heard a million times, it's good to have a really professional resume. So crafting your resume is a really important thing to have done before you go to look at internships. So it's important when you make your resume to like really try to promote yourself, which is pretty obvious. So if you have any relevant work experience, it's extremely important to put that on there. And even if you don't, it's important to try to like rearrange what you do to make it applicable to what you're applying for. So for instance, if you work at like a retail store, 
that's obviously not engineering, but you can say, for instance, like you're responsible for managing people if you're a manager there, which is an important skill that translates to engineering, not directly, but they call them soft skills. So if you had a job where you speak a lot, you could mention that as well, because that means you'll be good if you're in like a consulting firm to go speak to clients, you won't have a problem with that because you've had experience with it as well. So they know that you're starting out and you know, your first internship, you gotta get it somewhere. So you're not gonna have relevant work experience until you get that first one. So they understand that and it's just good on your resume to try to tailor it towards, you know, try to pick out those soft skills that you do think apply to engineering and put those on there. And the second note here, it says you won't know everything. That's a really big thing to keep in mind because, and your whoever's gonna hire you knows that as well. So don't be discouraged that, you know, you go to this place and you don't really know what's going on. They know that's a thing. Like when I got interviewed for the internship I have now, my boss is like, I know you're not gonna know a lot of stuff that we're gonna be doing and that's perfectly okay because they've been in your shoes too and they know like you're not gonna know everything when you graduate. So don't be discouraged by that and just try your best to learn as you go along. And then um, networking is also a really important thing and I'm sure you've heard a million times, it's all in who you know. So even if you don't have a good network built up now, like you don't know people in the industry or nobody in your family's done it before, which was my case, you could build your own network. So the uh, organizations that we have here, the student organizations like ASME, SAME, all of those are really important to get involved with because they have a lot of opportunities for networking where they go to different conferences and you meet a ton of potential people that could hire you. So they're really important to get involved with and like you'll be exposed to a lot of people that could potentially hire you in the future. And then there's also campus events like the career fair and all of those different things that bring people in that you could talk to to get opportunities for internships. So just keep that in mind as you go along. And then this is a little bit of advice on just making the most of your internship and like ways to potentially get hired by the person that is, uh, that you're interning for, which is what happened in my case. So while you're at your internship, it's always important, these seem pretty common sense, but it's good to just bring them up again. If you're asked to do something, make sure you do it to the best of your ability, whether it's taking out the trash or organizing a desk or setting up a computer, just do it to the best of your ability because they pretty much watch every single thing you do. So you don't wanna just plop something together or just do it to get it done. It's important to do it the best you can, even if it's not engineering related. Um, another one is don't be afraid to ask questions. Like I said earlier, they know that you don't know everything and it is perfectly okay to ask questions because they're not, they would rather you ask a question, learn and get it done than just sit there and try to figure it out and get nowhere and waste their time and their money. So it's important just ask a question. It's not a big deal at all. Um, and just learn as much as you can. If they're working on something that interests you, don't be afraid to ask about that too and say, you know, could you teach me that? Could I learn a little bit more about that? Usually they have a ton of books that they can give you if you want to read a book. They have a ton of codes that you can look into and learn as you go along. Um, and another thing would be to never set dormant. So if you run out of tasks, go ask for another task. Don't just sit there and not do anything because that does not look good at all. So it's important to always try to keep yourself busy and just try to make sure that you're always doing something that can help out, whether it doesn't matter what it is, just always try to find a job that you can be doing. And then another one is just to be respectful to everyone. That includes the people in your business, outside of your business, because people you talk to while you're at work may be like, if you work at a consulting firm and you have several other companies come in and they see you as an intern, you talk to them and are polite in the future, that could turn into a possible internship or a possible job. So you never know who you're talking to, so always try to be nice to everybody and it could potentially lead to something in the future if they give you their business card or you give them your business card or however it works. So it's just important to try to be respectful of everyone and just it could potentially lead to opportunities in the future. So that's pretty much all I have. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. When or where? When? Um, I had a non-related internship, like not specific engineering, like since I started college and then typically a lot of people get them like um, the summer before their like junior year, so like right after your sophomore year, because at that point you have a pretty good understanding of the fundamentals, so you're not gonna be completely lost. <laughs> so you'll have a good idea of like several of the different things that you're gonna kinda need to know and then 
it'll also help you as you go into it because you'll learn things that you'll see when you come back to school. I had that happen over the summer. I learned about some things at work and then I came back to school and actually learned about them again at school. So that was pretty neat. But yeah, typically like I know a lot of the people that I had class with did it before their junior year. So I um, heard the company that I work for just opened a branch in Huntington, like the office opened in July, but I found out, I saw an article that said that uh, the gentleman was opening a firm in Huntington, like a branch of the company, it's based out of Atlanta, um, in Huntington. So I just sent him an email and I was like, I don't know if you're looking for an intern or if you have any positions available, but if you are, I would be interested in applying for one. And he emailed me back and was like, no, we don't have anything right now. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and it's okay to be told no because it happens. You don't give up. So I just thought, well, nothing will come of it. And then a couple months later, he emailed me and was like, uh, well, can I see your resume? So I was like, yeah. So I sent him a resume. And it was a couple weeks later. And then he's like, would you like to come in for an interview? And I was like, sure. So I went in for an interview and then ended up getting the internship. So it was like a several month process where I'd get sporadic emails like asking for stuff. And then something came of it. So. Anybody else? One, one thing I would add, and I know, I know the point is to listen to your experience since I've been around, <laughs> you know, not to use my own advice. You had asked about when you should apply for internships. I think what I would say is that the sooner, the sooner you can get an opportunity, I would say the better. Um, so if, if it's earlier, you know, maybe it's during your sophomore year and you have a, you know, a firm or somebody you know approach you and say, hey, we've got an option, I think you need to heavily consider it because the more experience on your resume, <laughs> Again, thank you, Josh, and to my next speaker for, for the short notice. I really appreciate it. I'm going to turn it over to Janie. She's one of our civil engineering students getting ready to graduate next semester. She's going to tell you a little bit about what she's been doing uh, for the past little bit. I'm just going to turn it over okay. to Janie. Hi again. I'm Janie Maddox, and I'm a senior here and in the civil department. I'm going to talk to you about some of my summer internships and opportunities that I've had with these summer internships. I don't have a PowerPoint or anything, but I'm just going to talk to you all. So I, for the first four summers, um, I worked for the West Virginia Department of Highways in their materials control, soils, and testing division. And in this division, they have uh, separate sections, different sections. They have an aggregate section. They have a metal section, they have a cement section, they have an asphalt section, they have a paint section, they have a chemistry section, and they have a pavement section. Uh, I'm going to talk, and all these divisions, they, they kind of come together and they, and they write specs and they kind of keep everything kind of organized for the state. So each, the state's separated into different districts and each district has, has a materials lab, so the MTSMP they'll go and make sure that materials lab is doing everything right and making sure specifications are, are done accordingly. So I'm going to talk about the sections I worked in. I worked for the asphalt section, I worked for the cement section, and I worked for the pavement section. And I worked uh, here and there, but I'll, I'll tell you about that here in a few minutes. Um, in the asphalt section, I learned about hot mix asphalt, and I learned about asphalt emulsions and binders. And from this, I learned about all the testing and, and got to aid in some of this testing. And, and, and by doing so, I was able to understand and learn ASTMs and ASHTO specifications. 
um, which will be important in my later internship. Also with this section, I was able to go out to um, several paving paving projects. I worked. I went to several pre pre contracting meetings. I went to state specification meetings. Um, I went to several asphalt plants, and my favorite, and, and I guess the coolest thing I did was help assist with a paving project that had a percent within limit P, special PWL, percent within limit specification. So that was cool, and I got to be a part of that. And um, and with all that, I, I kind of that's just kind of where I've kind of honed in on my uh, my topics that I want to do maybe after school is with pavements and asphalt. So I want to talk about more of the concrete section now. So when I worked in concrete, I did, again, more testing, um, compressive strength tests, time sets, and then I was able to go to uh, precast concrete plants and make sure that to inspect them with my uh, person I was with. So it was, it was good to learn about precast concrete. Um, that was cool to see how all that operated. And I also got to go to a bridge pour, and that was really cool to see and, and to be a part of to, to do that. And then we, and then I went into the pavement section because they'll move you around a little bit in each section. But when I was in the pavement section, I got to go out and, and survey US 35 and West Virginia 33, and it was cool to understand like what's happening on your road. So I was able to kind of understand what the cracks mean and learn about that and, and just, and over the years, because we did it every year, watched how well that pavement held up each year. So I learned a lot by doing that. And if I wasn't out in the field, I was, in, I was inside uh, working on the calibration manuals, working with the cell. Um, I always stayed busy, and that's really important is to, to stay busy. So um, other things I did with that division. I was able to go to Bristol, Virginia and go to a steel fabrication shop and look at some of the equipment they were potentially going to use over there. And that was, again, really cool to see. And then uh, a lot of people don't, I guess, realize, but every material has to be tested, and that's including paint. So we went out to a bridge one day and we were testing, like, the strength of the paint. So that was cool to, cool to be a part of and, and watch. And then we'd go out to the New River Gorge Bridge and, and inspect and do some things with that as well. So, so how did I apply for that uh, position? I suppose I, on, I went online and they had a they had a link and you get you'll get an application packet, and then you'll just like you'll fill it out and you'll you'll send it back in. And I think the university doesn't the university send out? Yeah. It'll probably come out around the January February. And if you want to do it, the earlier you get it done, the better. So, um, and then if you do that, you can get it turned back in, and it'll be, all be good. And then I also worked for a different company this past year. I worked for a company called SNME, and they're an uh, engineering, engineering firm, and they just opened up a new office in Huntington. And I, and I, like, and I, they hired me. I'll tell you how I got hired first. So they, I was looking for a new summer internship. Um, I was wanting to build my resume, gain new experience. So I was looking for a job, and then my friend, she went to a career fair here at Marshall, and she spoke with them and stuff like that, but for some reason she was going to go do something else, and she gave me their contact info, and so I contacted them, and I said, hey, do you have any summer internships I can be a part of? And they said, yeah. And, you know, they said, okay, send us your resume and, and we'll see, you know, what, what, what we can do, essentially. So I got a call about that night. I sent it that morning. I got a call that night. And they were wanting to do, like, a phone interview with me the next day. So I contacted who would be my boss and, and talked to him. And what he liked about my resume was that I already had some background with asphalt and, and materials testing in general, and I was familiar with the ASTM's NASH code specification. So with, a, with SNME, I went and I, would get, I went to Lexington and 
your training down there, tested soils and, and concrete. And then they had me go over to New Albany, Indiana, and I was able to do more asp asphalt testing over there. And it was kind of cool to see how Indiana does it as well. So um, each state might do it just a little bit differently with their testing procedures, but it was cool to be a part of that and see. And then I went back in Huntington, and I helped design an asphalt lab. So it was really cool to um, help format the, the layout of that and help with some of their testing as well. And it was a great experience because I was able to go out and, and network and, and be a part of that and get a new internship. So I applied for that just by calling them. You can go online. They have a career page online you can look at. And But it's really honestly calling them saying, hey, do you have a summer internship? They're either going to say yes or no. Or they say, oh, hold up, maybe we'll get back with you. Type of thing, so always, always ask. Always ask. That's the best advice I can I can give you. Um, other advice I can give is if you have a summer internship, and say you just work in the summer, or you're going to work there the whole year but you finish, the one of the things you can do is always write a thank you note. Um, thank thank you, thank them for um, that opportunity, and that and everything's a learning opportunity. So take, take it like that. Um, and other advice I would give would be to definitely ask all the questions you can. Um, you're either going to be right or you're going to be wrong, and that's okay. So, And other things I can say about being here at Marshall as a senior, um, don't, again, don't be afraid to ask questions. Go, if you don't understand something, go talk to your professor. It's okay. Um, because ultimately you're paying for this. So uh, that's about all I have. So. Anybody have any questions for Jane? <laughs> How, uh, would you say the Department of Highway is more accepting to hiring sophomores than freshmen? Yeah, I, I was hired right after my freshman year. Or like, yeah, my freshman year. So. That, she wasn't kidding when she said that getting your application in early is important. They get so many applications that one of the metrics by which they decide who they hire and who they don't is the time stamp on the application. I kid you not. So you could be a senior turning it in at the very last minute versus a freshman who turned it in bright and early and the freshman might get the job. Yeah. 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 Is that it? Thank you. Civils, your 